Hi, welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to learn uh, how to analyze an RC cantilever column with square cross section using OpenSysPy. Some key things that you will learn in this project are you will learn about uh, creating the RC section using fiber section concept of OpenSysPy and uh, visualizing the created section using some most advanced visualization libraries of OpenSysPy. You will also learn how to download experimental data of uh, RC columns are uh, tested under a variety of uh, loading conditions from peer database and uh, you can use it in your graduate and undergraduate projects. You will also learn how to process the cyclic load displacement data and extract the displacement data for performing a displacement control simulation. And last but not the least, you will learn in detail about various stages involved in creating the finite element model and post-processing the load displacement results. If you have any queries, you can always post your queries in the course discussion forum or you can email to elastropy at gmail.com. Let's start the actual project. The column that we are going to study in this project is obtained from a peer database whose experimental data can be found from this link. Upon clicking this link, you will be redirected to structural performance database maintained by peer. The experimental studies on this column have been conducted by Murat and uh, Gune. It has been published in 1989 in uh, ACA Structural Journal. The authors of this paper has made this experimental data available through peer database. The concrete strength of the column, specifically the unconfined concrete strength of the column is uh, 32 MPa and the yield stress of the main reinforcement is 470 MPa. It is a square cross section of uh, 350 mm by 350 mm and it is 1000 mm long. An axial load of uh, 600 kN is acting in the top of the column. It has a 25 mm dia main reinforcement. Uh, it has 8 number of main reinforcement bars are used. In this column, no significant uh, concrete crushing or uh, concrete spalling, long bar, buckling, long bar, fracture, spiral fracture, none of the damages have been observed. It's a plain testing. And the last one is the resources. Here you will get the experimental data for this column, the force displacement data. Upon clicking this link, you will be directed to control A, control C, and then I'm pasting that uh, in an Excel sheet. So here upon pasting this into an Excel sheet, it will be pasted as a text. Now you need to convert this into numbers. So these two variables are uh, not necessary. I'm just uh, deleting those and then I'm selecting this entire column from the data tab and then text to columns. I'm giving this uh, delimited option and uh, space as my delimiter. I'm just uh, separating this into two multiple columns. So if I select these two columns and uh, plot a chart but the, for these two columns, you will get the load displacement curve. I'll just load uh, these two columns at some point into our uh, notebook. Let's go back to our notebook. These are all some of the libraries that we used uh, in our project for various purposes, such as for analysis, for visualization, for plotting, etc. To see if a library is uh, installed or not, you can use uh, the pip show command. If the library is installed, it will just show you uh, the library else it will throw an error if the library is not installed you can always install it using pip install command upon installing this libraries we need to import them into our current workspace after importing i just renamed them as uh, some simple variables so i have used these variables os osv plt etc for my convenience you can use any numbers here but this opensys pi dot opensys ops vis these are the actual library names and you have to give as it is the geometric and the material properties that we saw in the web page are uh, defined here in this project uh, we will be doing our entire analysis in millimeter and a newtons unit. For that, I have just created two variables, meters and uh, kilonewtons to convert from meter to millimeter, kilonewton to newton and vice versa. Our model is a two-dimensional model and uh, at each node, it has three DOFs, two translational and one rotational DOF. And uh, in the present study, I just took uh, five number of elements. This is optional. You can choose any number of elements. The only Criteria is accuracy in terms of stresses and in terms of load displacement curves. These are all some of the geometric properties, length, width, and depth. I just defined, I calculated the area. I have given this Engs modulus as 2E5, Engs modulus of steel, and just uh, moment of inertia, IZ. I have defined vertical load as uh, 600 kilonewton and uh, horizontal load as 1. I'll come to this one uh, when we are performing uh, the push over analysis. So here, I have created the number of nodes. Since it is a cantilever, 
or number of nodes is simply number of elements plus one. I've created three dummy variables for coordinates and uh, element tags. Here I have created a for loop to calculate um, the nodal coordinates and the node tags. The nodal coordinates are calculated based on one element length. Let's see how this is evaluated. Let's say this is our column and uh, this is our uh, first node. I have defined uh, origin at the first node and our entire column is resting on the y-axis. It means all of our x-coordinates are zero and uh, L by NELE refers to the length of one element. By using the element number which is n and uh, the length of one element which is L by NELE, you will get uh, the coordinate, the y-coordinate of each node. That's the logic I have given here uh, and the number of elements are uh, simple. It simply uh, zero to number of elements. So if you look at this for loop, it starts from zero to num nodes. But actually what is happening is since it is starting from zero, the end element is num nodes minus one. It doesn't take this num nodes into consideration. Keep that in mind. With that preliminary definitions, now let's start creating our actual uh, finite element model of our RC cantilever using OpenSys. Using this OpenSys wipe command, I am deleting all the existing database elements, materials, etc. if at all, if there are any. And uh, using this model command, I just created the generic model, which is of two dimensional and uh, each node has three DOFs. The nodes have been defined using this node command in this for loop. So the node takes three arguments. Since it is a two dimensional model, just X coordinate and Y coordinate are enough. And the another one is a node tag. These are the material properties of steel. Fy is for the TDMPA and B is the strain hardening ratio. These are the properties of unconfined concrete or cover concrete. It has 32 MPa and the strain at which this 32 MPa occurs is a 0.003 and the ultimate strength of the concrete is 0.25 times the peak strength followed by its strain. The ultimate strain of the concrete is taken as 0.01. These are the properties of confined concrete. The confinement factor is taken as 1.3. This is evaluated using uh, Manders model. We multiply uh, the unconfined concrete properties with this confinement factor and get this uh, properties of the confined concrete. These are three tags that we specified for each material. Number one for uh, confined concrete, number two for unconfined concrete, number three for steel. And we are using concrete 01 for modeling this confined and unconfined concretes and uh, steel 01 for modeling the steel. By using these links, you can see uh, the actual constitutive model of concrete 01 and uh, steel 01. This is the actual model of uh, concrete 01. It looks like this. It has one envelope in the compression direction and no tensile strength is considered here. This is the constitutive model of steel. It is a bilinear model, means it has two linear curves in the positive side and two linear curves on the negative side. And here B is the strain hardening ratio. It basically softens the stiffness after yield. And then the concrete cross section is created using this quadrilateral patch and straight layer commands as follows. This is our actual cross section of the column. So it has an unconfined concrete and it has a confined concrete at the core and steel rebars. The basic idea is you have to divide this entire cross section into several patches of individual materials and you have to evaluate the coordinates of the vertices of each patch and you need to give these coordinates of the vertices as inputs to the quadrilateral patch command and layer commands like this. So to create this uh, confined concrete patch, I have given the vertices of the confined concrete patch that we have just uh, seen here, followed by I have created four more patches for uh, unconfined concrete. And I have created three layers of steel, the first one with the three bars, second one with the two bars, and the third one with three bars. These are those three layers, layer one, layer two, and layer three. So the entire quadrilateral patch and uh, straight layer commands has been defined as a list and we are going to give this list as an input to this uh, command fibsec list to commands. So this is a command uh, given in the OpenSys visualization library. This basically converts the input list to the actual section object in the OpenSys format. Followed by I have created this uh, geometric transfer using the linear geometric transformation 
technique followed by the beam integration scheme I have defined using Lobato integration scheme with the five number of integration points I have given this integration scheme tag as one we are going to use only one integration scheme for all the elements we are going to use a displacement beam column element for defining each element using the plot fiber section command of uh, OpenSys visualization library we can plot the entire cross section that we have just defined uh, using this fiber section command quadrilateral patch and layer straight commands so this is how our uh, quadrilateral patch look like this the interior uh, green color one is the confined concrete which we have just defined using uh, four number of patches in the y direction and four number of patches in the z direction similarly the unconfined concretes have been defined uh, with varying number of fibers in the y and uh, z directions and these are the steel reinforcements using fix command we apply the boundary conditions in our case ours is a cantilever so all of our boundary conditions at node number one has to be restrained so all our uh, translational and uh, rotational debuffs are arrested Using the recorder command, we tell the OpenSys to record uh, the forces and displacement at some specific locations. I am recording uh, the reaction at uh, first node, that is the bottom node, in DWF direction 1. Similarly, I will record the displacement at the top node in the DWF direction 1. The minus 1 refers to the last element in the node tax area. Using the plot model command, we can visualize the entire uh, finite well model that we have created. If you look at this model, the bottom node is completely restrained. So the square uh, pink dot is the fixed boundary conditions. The red numbers are the element numbers and the blue numbers are the node numbers and the cross marks are the integration points that we have defined for each element. Then we are moving to the analysis settings for our incremental analysis. So in this column, we have two loads acting on the structure. The first one is the gravity load. Second one is the lateral pushover load. So we are going to perform two analysis for each load. Analysis settings involves creating the load patterns, the load, the vertical load, the V load that we have created uh, at the top. We are going to apply here using this time series and pattern commands. After setting the loads, we just set some methods to handle constraints, equation numbers, and uh, the matrices. After that, we set uh, the norm displacement increment test criteria to evaluate the convergence at each and every iteration. We use a simple Newton algorithm that updates the tangent stiffness at uh, every iteration. For gravity analysis, I consider 10 steps. Each step size is simply one by number of steps, and this step size is giving as an input to the integrator. In this project for gravity analysis, I'm using this uh, load control integrator, and then I'm setting a command to tell OpenSys that this is a static analysis, followed by I asked OpenSys to analyze all the steps. This analyze command returns zero if the analysis is successful. If this analysis is a failure, it returns some negative number. That criteria has been used to see if the analysis is successful or failed so in our case the gravity analysis is successful next we will move to the cyclic pushover analysis the first command that we issue in the cyclic pushover analysis is this load constant through this command we are telling the open sys to keep the previous gravity analysis results followed by we are defining the horizontal load in the displacement control analysis Horizontal load is not actually a load. It is simply a load factor. So I have just defined it as one or it can be any number. If you give any other number, the actual load that you get as an output from the analysis is factored through that uh, H load. So since I don't want any factors applied to the output, so I just given as one and the analysis settings that we have used in the gravity analysis has been carry forwarded here as well the same uh, methods to handle constraints and numbers and the matrices and the same test criteria and the same algorithm. The experimental data that we have just uh, downloaded from the peer database has been stored uh, into an Excel sheet with the name test underscore data underscore one dot XLX. So the data I am reading into the current workspace and storing it as a test underscore data. So these are some mathematical programming manipulations like um, I'm just uh, converting the Python array to a NumPy array 
and then we are processing the test data in this disk profile function this disk profile function takes one input that is test data let's see what is happening in this disk profile function this is that uh, disk profile function here what we are mainly doing is if you look at the displacement history it does not have a definite increment and decrement patterns it has multiple increment and decrement patterns we are going to unify this increment and uh, decrement patterns with a step size of 0.1 means the step size will increase or decrease at a constant rate of 0.1 that's what is being done in this loop the final normal the final unified uh, displacement history is stored in this disp increment history variable this is the output of this function this output is being read into our uh, main python workspace and uh, in this for loop using displacement control analysis we analyzed one step at a time and we evaluate the convergence status at each and every step so if all steps are successfully converged it returns a pushover analysis successful status if any of the step failed to if you see if you notice a convergence issue at any of the step then it returns pushover analysis fail at ith step then we come to the post processing section here we gather the numerical and uh, the experimental data and we plot one over each other using matplotlib library here if you look at this plot the blue one is the numerical simulation red one is the test data if you look at our numerical simulation he is not that bad however it was unable to quantify this post peak strength degradation and slightly overestimated uh, the load displacement curve in every loading and unloading regions actually however this is not that bad but it can be improved uh, to a greater extent using specialty elements such as zero length element we can use them to modify the stiffness of the elements and uh, you can use some other advanced material models such as concrete cm concrete 07 etc of open sys using them we can get an accurate match with this experimental curve with that we complete the overall uh, pushover analysis for downloading this python notebook and experimental data please go to the project resources page that comes after this video and follow the instructions given in that page thank you see you in the next project